Our universe is incredibly complex, full of billions of stars, countless particles, planets, and living things. Science helps us to understand the intricacies of the world that we live in. It helps us to measure the size and complexities of galaxies and understand how our planets move and change. Science helps us understand the wonders of our own planet, too. It explains our climate, changes in our atmosphere, waters, and our rivers. Science helps us to understand the plants and the creatures that live among us. But what about humans? How do we understand ourselves? What makes us who we are? The answer lies in an equally complex and amazing system, our brains. Our brains are responsible for how we feel, our personalities, the things that excite us, make us sad, our deepest memories. My name is Dr. Kimberly Gerling and I'm a neuroscientist. As a grad student, I was fascinated by brains, and this led me to do my PhD in neuroscience at the University of British Columbia. In my PhD, I studied a disease called Huntington's disease. This is a genetic condition that causes cell death in our brain's motor control system. When these cells die, patients experience serious motor issues and eventually very severe dementia. And right now, there's not a cure. So during my PhD, what I did is trying to develop new preventative therapies for patients with Huntington's disease. Developing treatments for diseases like Huntington's requires a really good understanding of how different parts of the brain impact different behaviors and experiences. The study of understanding how our brains link to our behavior is called neuropsychology. And while we've come a really long way in this field, our understanding of neuropsychology is actually fairly new, and it has pretty deep Canadian roots. And in fact, a Canadian neuroscientist called Dr. Brenda Milner is often referred to as the founder of neuropsychology. She's a scientist from McGill and the Montreal Neurological Institute, and she actually turned 101 this July 2019. Dr. Milner has inspired me a lot in my own career and is still one of the most influential neuroscientists who are alive today. Brenda Milner did her Bachelor's of Arts in Experimental Psychology at Cambridge, where she was one of only 400 women at school. At Cambridge, she was fascinated by the brain and how it controls our behavior. After World War II, where she worked developing perceptual tasks for selecting air crew in the war. She moved to Montreal with her husband, where Brenda became a PhD candidate in experimental psychology. Her work focused on better understanding memory by studying patients who had neurological memory impairments. During her work, Brenda attracted the attention of Canadian scientist Wilder Penfield. Penfield was conducting experiments where he touched the brain while patients were awake and recorded what they felt and experienced. You might remember learning about patients who could smell burnt toast before they had seizures. It's a pretty famous Canadian experiment. While Penfield is credited for that work, Brenda Milner actually had a huge part in it. Her work helped make groundbreaking discoveries in epilepsy, but also helped us create a better map of the functional areas of the brain in ways that we had never before thought possible. Once she finished school, Dr. Milner continued to conduct research. She focused on how different parts of our brain control our memories, our emotions, and our experiences. And for almost 30 years, she worked with one particular patient named H.M. H.M. had undergone a traumatic brain injury and he had very serious memory impairments. And working with H.M. over rigorous experimentation, she helped define his memory impairments and learned that though he could perfectly remember his past, he actually couldn't form any new memories that he could understand and describe. But he was able to learn new motor tasks like tracing pictures through a mirror reflection. And this important work led us to understand that humans actually have multiple memory systems that control memories for things like language, motor skills, short and long-term memory. And this was a hugely important discovery. And if you've taken even a very basic neuroscience course, you've probably learned about this amazing work. Over the years, Dr. Milner continued to do incredible research connecting our brains with our behaviors, which included things like brain hemispheres and how they interact with one another, which has a huge impact on things like cognition and emotion. Dr. Milner is a pioneer in her field. Some of the most famous neuroscientists credit Dr. Milner for creating an entirely new field of neuroscience, neuropsychology. The impact of her work changed the field completely and it still influences science today. 
Personally, I find Dr. Milner's story to be very inspiring. There were not many women in the field at the time, and Brunder was highly motivated. Not only is she an incredible scientist who had a huge impact on the field, she also continues to be an amazing and enthusiastic advocate for science even up to today. Up until the last few years, Dr. Milner actually continued to be a professor at McGill, has given numerous talks, and she encourages young scientists, especially young women in science. She's a tireless force and an inspiration to scientists here in Canada and abroad. In my personal career path, I've shifted from laboratory science into science advocacy, and I can only hope that I continue to be as passionate as Dr. Milner in my own career. One of my favorite parts about her as a scientist is her boundless enthusiasm about science. She said before that the characteristic that's driven her the most in her career is curiosity, and that being a noticer has allowed her to move forward in her career. And I only hope that I can never stop being curious. I think it's a good reminder to all of us.